Hey everyone, it's Chris from California Cycle Works with another silly YouTube. So we wanted to know a little more about how long our timing belts were. So I made this, this little device you're looking at and it measures quite accurately the center to center length between the two sprockets here. In most manufacturing, people kind of take a lot of things for granted. Um, when you ask someone about a timing belt, they say, well, what's the length? And then so it's supposed to be 3 eighths of an inch between each tooth. And then the length would be the number of teeth times 3 eighths of an inch. That sounds great, but in reality, the Ducatis don't use that. They have a little bit wider spacing. And so when we first made our timing belts, specifically like this 1100, we made them more to spec and they were too tight. And so the tooling had to be redone. And so now we're measuring the belts just to know where they're at so we can talk to people and we basically group them for selling as well. Um, I did a little post on the Ducati Monster Forum about what went into this and some of the assumptions. Uh, There's quite a bit of insanity about what is a length? <laughs> There's so much that we take for granted. Ended up having to use a really high precision DRO, that's digital readout, glass slide. Inside this is a glass tube with lines every micron. And its trolley here has a light that shines across it and it sends signals up to our little computer. And so it's to the point where even the accuracy of measuring the initial distance, which I determined was that value, this is about 20 times more accurate than your best tools. So there's always guessing involved. However, we do know that the pitch is not 3 eighths of an inch. It is not the ideal book value that companies will say. So for this particular belt, It's 10.116 inches between the two sprockets we have. You probably can't quite see it, but I made the assumption that the diameter is 55.7 millimeters. And from everything I've been able to read, it's actually when you visually observe where the cords lie in the belt, what's that diameter on the sprocket? Because any other method of measuring just simply didn't make sense. I tried doing along the outer diameter of the sprocket and the numbers just, they're, they're too far off. And then length is obviously just simply uh, center twice plus the diameter times pi. Nothing real crazy. So the belt length on this one is 688.88 millimeters. But the big point is, is that we, we really know it's 10.116 inches between the centers and it's right on our ideal length, which is 10.117. And so great variance here from one to the next. So we'll take this one off and we'll put it in the 116 pile. Currently, we're trying to get as many used OEM belts in as possible so that we can have a great idea of what the end result expectation is. So if we know a belt works on your bike and it's 10 inches and say 120 between the centers, then we know what too long will become or what too short might become. Otherwise, we only have a uh, experimental feedback from shops and which we have had in the past so now we're going to keep better records of all of our belt lengths in case somebody does have a problem so the tool's got a pretty neat little feature of telling you right away if it's good or bad and then even the least amount of touching on the bench makes the numbers change I found one of the better things to do is just drag the belt along the sprocket and it'll kind of align and center up and, and be happy.
I have a different spring set up for each of the, of the belt kinds we test, so they all get pulled on reasonably well. My little instruction sheet for the different springs. And the little toolbox with the parts. The computer was pretty crazy. Um, this is called an Arduino platform. It's open source, open hardware. And uh, somebody makes this shield that fits over it with the graphic display and little joystick button. Love it. Great for feedback. And then an Australian company makes this particular Arduino uh, microcontroller board. Um, it's got a prototyping area on it and it's got all, all gold leaf on the pads. And we actually had to use a uh, quadrature decoder counter chip to keep track of what this thing's doing because the signals come so quickly. The processor, even with five and 10 microsecond long interrupts, these came faster than this could process. So now we have the dedicated IC chip underneath here and we'll probably do a little close up later. This belt's a little bit longer, 121. Make a new pile. And a few more belts to go and this batch will be done. One thing we have observed already is that the OEM belts will grow dramatically in length and center to center distance. I was quite surprised to see some of the numbers we were getting, but the one of them we did get to measure was the 996 belt, which is a little longer, but it would grow more than a millimeter in length upon being used. And so we're seeing about 10 thousandths of a center center distance variation in our belts. And that's about like a, a say it's manufactured new. And that's like half of what the spec tolerance is, about 20 thousandths. We'll have to do another video for our TPS test bench. But the throttle position sensor bench, I want to rewrite so that it uses this nifty graphics display and better formalize that test bench. It's a little bit ghetto right now. So there you have it. That's what we do when we get the belts in. We check them out for you and put them in piles so we group them appro appropriately. And uh, I'm Chris Kelly. Thanks for tuning in.